Good day to you. Pastor Ben Crossan here again from Deerfield Friends Church, and it's time for another midweek recap. So this week I'm starting off with a bunch of pineapple stuff that I brought from my office. I got this pineapple squishy thing, pineapple water bottle, pineapple cookie jars, pineapple candle, pineapple little mint box, lots of pineapple stuff. And I've got more in my office and more at home. If you know me very well, I use a pineapple to illustrate, to connect people with the thought of the sweet love of Jesus. Because when I talk about the pineapple, I talk about the pineapple being made by God. And he got so excited about this sweet fruit that he went, bam, put some celebration on top. So the pineapple represents the sweet love of Jesus. We're celebrating. And so for many years, I worked in middle school ministry and I used the pineapple to uh, illustrate how to express the sweet love of Jesus in different ways and who to express it to. And we would pass out three of them once again on, on many Sunday mornings. And the third one was meant to be shared with somebody that doesn't know about the sweet love of Jesus or who's really low on the sweet love of Jesus. And all of us come to a place in our life and know the people around us that are in need of the sweet love of Jesus. This past week, we continued in our sermon series, Life's Healing Choices, a sermon series that was inspired by Rick Warren's um, church out in Saddleback. They did this sermon series. And this second sermon series was based upon the hope choice. And most of them are based upon a beatitude of Jesus. And the beatitude that we focused on this past week was Matthew 5, 4. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. We all mourn over different things, don't we? We mourn over loss of health, of other people's health. We lost over relationships, either to death or even time. We move on. We don't see friends that meant so much to us certain seasons of life. We also mourn what's going on on the inside of other people, but also the inside of us. There's things that we deal with that we're like, oh, I just wish this was different. Why do I have to deal with this? And a lot of times it could be our own sin nature inside of us. Decisions that we make over and over again from this, we're like, why did I do that? And we mourn inside and we long for some comfort of this reality that we wrestle with. And so for a lot of humans, they turn to this thing called escape. We escape to a number of different things. So we don't need to focus and deal with this mourning that's going on inside of us. We could escape to play, and play is a good thing, unless we're just using it all the time to escape things that we need to deal with. It could be substances, like peanut butter, food, it could be alcohol, other drugs, it could be people. We can escape to certain people. We just try to use them. We can even escape to bad relationships. We can escape to a lot of different things and it can hurt us more. But God calls us to a path of turning to him, of his path of comfort. And so this past week, we focused on three different things on learning about this, this comfort for those that mourn. And these are three different stops that we made. The first is see God for who he really is. So who is God, really? We can think a lot of different things about God, but who God really is, as the scriptures revealed, is he's a good God, full of mercy and compassion, gracious. He gives us good standards in life to live within for our, our protection. And he gives us second chances so many different times when we turn to him. He is a good God, and we can taste his goodness in so many different ways through his creation, through, this, through his son, Christ Jesus, and even him working through his people and touching our lives in different ways. So many ways to taste the goodness of God. And when we see who God really is, it leads us to our next stop. And our next stop is seeing who we really are. Because when we see God in his goodness, a lot of times it can leave us convicted. It leaves us seeing that we're in need. We don't meet this certain standard. As the scriptures say, all have sinned and fall short of God's glorious standard. And so this is a really important stop because this is when we see those things that we're mourning over and we bring them to God. We don't interact with a good God a lot of times until we hurt enough with those things that are inside of our lives to bring them to him. But he waits for us. 
And this leads us to our third stop on God's path to find comfort. And that, that stop is he can change us. See how God can change us. When we turn to God, this good God, we just don't see him as like a waterfall or some picture on the wall. We have a living God. And when we turn to him, we find this living God. And when we interact with him, obey him, get in step with what he's calling us to, we see this good living God's presence in our lives and he comforts us in so many different ways. He has the power to comfort us in any season of life that we're in. In Isaiah 40, 28 through 31, it says this. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary, and he understands no one, and his understanding no one can fathom. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. That's good stuff. Even youths grow tired and weary, and young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, those who put their focus on the Lord, put their eyes on him and lock in on him, his promises, his commands, his name, his presence, that act of him sending Christ Jesus to die on a cross for our sins. Him, for those who give him attention, will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. So how does God change us? With himself. We need to see him in his goodness. We do that by turning to him. And then we recognize those things in our life that we need to bring in him, bring to him, and we're honest about them. And then we press into God. We press into his power and we open up to what he has for us. So this leads us to a choice, a challenge that we had from this past week. And the challenge was this. The challenge is earnestly believe God exists. It's hard sometimes, even when you see stuff inside of you and the world falling down, like, God, are you even there? But still the challenge. Earnestly believe God exists, that you matter to him, and that he has the power to help you change, to help me change. And throughout the centuries, throughout the decades, and those that walk close to him, and as you observe in your own life, those that walk to him, they have been comforted. It's one of the things that I so enjoy about being a part of the family of God. You take any situation that somebody's dealing with, you can even Google it. <laughs> a testimony comes up about God comforting that person that deals with a certain situation. It could be so many different things. So I wanna encourage you today, take your mourning to God and wait on him for his comfort. He had the power to raise Christ Jesus from the dead. He has the power to meet you in those areas of your life that feel like death. With that being said, thank you so much for joining us again today. Glad that you're here and I hope that you're having a week where you're turning to him, finding some hope in, in some hard times because a lot of people are going through hard times right now. And remember always this, if nobody's told you that they love you today, we love you from Deerfield friends. And so much more importantly, Jesus loves you more. Press into him what that's about. Seek after him. He is near. He will be found. Have a good day. Bye.